things. Um, uh, of course, that's the call, but maybe, maybe all of us have our own areas to grow, uh, depending on which part there is. So, so I'm, I'm delving in your gray area, <laughs> in a way. So, <laughs> uh, the last part, I'm just saying, what, what does the Spirit of God bring? And the first verse, the Spirit of God brings discernment. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So it's the Spirit actually teaches us, and it's up to us to hope, be open and accept and receive the teaching. Um, so it's even not about our human smarts, it's more about can we be receptive, you know, can we uh, receive what the Spirit is saying. Uh, and then the Spirit also brings exhortation, although the passage doesn't say the Holy Spirit, it just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, the church, uh, we exhort, we exhorted each one of you and encourage you and charge you to walk in a manner worthy of God. So, you know, other Christians can provide exhortation. Um, repentance, I don't have a passage because there's too many, <laughs> so I didn't put it there. Uh, but the main thing that the Spirit of God brings, a, a big thing about it, is the fruit of the Spirit. You know, as we walk, as we do life, as we follow God, the Spirit brings fruit in us. You know, the Spirit changes us in our hearts. Uh, and, and these are all probably a memory passage that most of you since you were kid Sunday school. So, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, of which there is no law. Um, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So, so that's why I always sometimes say, well, it's hard to keep comparing people because we get so tempted to, you know, to say, oh, you should be where he's at or where, where I'm at, and that leads to spiritual pride, but, uh, but that's another discussion altogether. <laughs> uh, anyway, any questions? Uh, because I do need time, time remaining to do other things. Well, I guess um, I have one thing. Um, you know, there were, in Galatians 5, there are a list of works of the flesh. You know, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, peace, anger, robberies.